Please join me in welcoming Dr. Amy Gutman, tonight's gold medal honoree. Please, please sit down. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Let's hear it again for our host. So also another big round of applause for Leslie Odom Jr. and the fabulous Penn counterparts, out of which John Legend came, and he comes back to sing with our Penn counterparts. So let's give it up for both of them. Wow. Oh. So I have to say, and I have some prepared remarks, but this is a spur of the moment. Um, I would have said anyway that I'm internally grateful to my husband, Michael Doyle. But I have to say, yes, but I have to say, because you don't all know this, but he is um, Superman as of Yesterday at about 4 p.m., we were planning on making our way to New York. We had another party last night, and our friends are here for, who were part of that party, too. And um, he got acute appendicitis. Now, now, this is why I'm standing up here now just smiling, because he is a superhero, and Penn Medicine and nursing are the place to go. He is here tonight. So thank you, Michael, and thank you, Penn Medicine and Penn Nursing, for the best care in the world. There's no better ad, actually, than my husband. Um, and all of you spouses should take a model from him. I also am internally grateful to our daughter, Abby, and our son-in-law, Jakob, and you saw those two wonderful grandchildren. Um, I'm just so, so grateful to them. And seeing Abby, uh, seeing Abby at the end of that video reminded me, it took me way back to when I began the presidency of Penn. And I remember one weekend that I was sitting at my desk signing a huge stack of, of letters, my wrist only slightly aching, um, pen in hand, and um, Abigail came in and she marveled at what I was doing. And she said, that's sure a lot of letters, Mom. She started teasing me. It's lucky you have such a nice signature. And then the punchline came, that must be why they appointed you president of the University of Pennsylvania. So now you know my secret. So that um, fond memory uh, got me thinking seriously about what I set out to do when I began as president. And the story of what we've achieved since then together. And I have to emphasize the together because the secret is out of the bag. Um, Penn has the most amazing team of leaders that a president or any university could possibly hope for. So simply put, um, what we've achieved is the story of higher education's power. It's power to transform lives. And speaking of simply put, um, I have a riddle for you. Um, what's the difference between a scrap metal dealer and the president of the University of Pennsylvania? The, that's the answer, one generation. My father was a scrap metal dealer and I was the first in my family to graduate college. Kurt Gutmann escaped Nazi Germany 
and he eventually immigrated to the United States. This was, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the land of liberty and opportunity for my father and my parents. And it's our job, it's our job, and it's the job of higher education to make this the land of liberty and opportunity for every Pennsylvanian and every person in our country and the face of the earth. My father, my father passed away when I was a high school junior. My mother went to work as a secretary. And at that tragic time for me, attending college was almost inconceivable, but scholarships made it possible. And that leap utterly transformed my life. It made educational opportunity the driving force and the absolute defining mission of my life as well. My mission and Penn's mission is to open those transformative doors to as many people as possible. So I received a letter from a Penn student recently named Jake Rhodes. Jake Rhodes comes from Jamestown, Pennsylvania, population 600, and that's rounding up. <laughs> if you drew a straight line from Jamestown, Pennsylvania to my office in College Hall, Philadelphia, it would crisscross the state diagonally, right across the entire Commonwealth. And Jake wrote the following to me. I won a substantial four-year scholarship offered jointly by the Pennsylvania Society and the McGuire Foundation. Combined with the unbelievable Penn Grant, this made it possible for me to pursue the education of my dreams. The most stirring part of my quest for the best education in the world is that there is an amazing number of Pennsylvanians who don't even know me, but believed in my potential. If you have the chance, President Gutman, please convey to the society that one young Quaker values their support, loves this university, and is working hard to honor these gifts. And here's Jake's last line, the future is wide open. So, Jake, I do have the chance, and I couldn't have put it better myself. At Penn, the future truly is wide open. You see it in the dreams come true of our talented students, and you see it in the life-changing breakthroughs of our brilliant faculty. In that video, you saw Carl June of Penn talking about the astonishing promise of immunotherapies. I can't see Carl without also seeing Emily Whitehead. When she was only six years old, Emily suffered a devastating relapse from acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Her parents were told she was days from dying. Then, in the darkest of moments, Tom and Carrie Whitehead, her parents, found Dr. Carl June. And they also found a team at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania who offered an innovative experimental treatment called CART T-cell therapy. CAR-T reprograms a patient's own white blood cells to target and destroy cancerous cells. And thanks to this revolutionary treatment, Emily is now a vibrant, cancer-free 14-year-old, braces and all. <laughs> Penn's, Penn's CAR-T cell therapy has gone on to become the first ever FDA-approved gene therapy for cancer. The Wall Street Journal has called it, and I quote, the biggest 
breakthrough in cancer history. In the past two years alone, 10 gene therapies incubated at Penn have been approved for treatment of thousands and thousands of patients, and the best is yet to come. <laughs> Penn's pioneering breakthroughs and our inspiring student stories are what get me up every morning. But it's essential that we remember all the important work of higher education can only happen when we dedicate ourselves to making it so. The future is indeed wide open, but it has not, nor it, will it ever be, a foregone conclusion. We must make it so. Now more than ever before, education is absolutely essential to creating a wide open future for as many people as possible. So are all of you here at the Pennsylvania Society, as you could hear in Jake's letter, opening doors. We must always, always hold true to our commitment to quality education and opportunity for all Pennsylvanians, indeed for all people everywhere. And to that end, as Bob said, we, I, Pennsylvania Society are donating the gold medal prize money of $50,000 to the Henry C. Lee Public Elementary School in West Philadelphia. <laughs> and to amplify the good this prize money will do, I am proud to announce that Penn will match it, dollar for dollar. So together, that's $100,000 in support of the phenomenal principal, the amazing superintendent of schools we have, Bill Height, who's here today. Let's give it up for Bill Height. And what's front and center are those dedicated teachers and those wonderful students at the Lee School. So from Jamestown, Pennsylvania, to the classrooms of West Philadelphia, from realizing the dreams of our students to saving the lives of patients at home and around the world. And from the daughter of an immigrant scrap metal dealer to the president of the University of Pennsylvania, through higher education, all it takes is one generation. On behalf of Penn, on behalf of higher education in our Commonwealth, and on behalf of every person, every person in our state and beyond, yearning for better, I accept, I humbly accept, this gold medal with the greatest of pride and of hope. The future is indeed wide open. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you.